What's up, guys? It's Chris. I've had a lot of people ask me which killers are my favorite to play in Dead by Daylight, so I just wanted to make a whole video ranking every single killer from most fun to least fun, in my personal opinion, so let's get right into it. All right, YouTube homies, we're starting off with our DVD killer fun tier list. These are the killers that are the most fun and least fun to me. I'm going to be ranking them S tier as the most fun, obviously, D tier as the least fun. It's totally my opinion. You guys might disagree, but in case any of you guys were, you know, newer to playing killer and wondering what I thought uh, a lot of people would have a lot of fun with or not so much, uh, that's why we're making this, and I just think it's kind of fun, too. So, I'm going to start off with the Trapper Man in the D tier. For me personally, I like the mechanical killers and stuff like that. Getting satisfying hits with different powers and stuff like that. For Trapper, really what it feels like if somebody steps into a trap, to me personally, is they messed up and weren't paying attention. Uh, not really playing very well. Uh, because the power realistically has a ton of counterplay. You know, the best way to get value out of him is playing basement, which also isn't super interesting to me. Obviously, it can be very good, but people can just completely ignore it. And yeah, the counterplay of the traps just popping him, holding him for teammates, and just paying attention to where he is and running away from the area you know he set up his traps in. To me, I find uh, the killer pretty unsatisfying, whether you're winning or losing. Because if they're stepping in the traps, like I said, uh, they just kind of messed up. But that's just me personally. I'm going to put Trapper pretty much at the bottom of the list. I would like to see a rework of this killer. I had some cool ideas of what they could do with him. But anyway, I'm going to move on to the second killer, which is Wraith. We're going to put him in the B tier. Because uh, as this killer has a really simple kit, he's one of those killers where uh, if I'm looking to just hop on DVD and vibe on killer, just chill... I'd still be able to have a good time just with a really relaxed build and not sweating super hard. Wraith is pretty much always my go-to. Uh, he's great map mobility. He has like no real bad weakness uh, outside of if if survivors have ridiculous gen speed stuff. Uh, it can he can struggle with actually getting the downs. The first hits are no problem at all though, and his good map mobility. He can take care of resources really quick with like shadow dance and stuff. I, I find it really enjoyable to just hop on and vibe. So I'm going to set him in an easy B tier for me. Now, Billy, who just recently got buffed, is one of, if not the most fun killer in the game to me right now. Man, I love him. There's still maps where his power doesn't feel the best, but you can still use it. And now you can still get hits with it. His add-ons are all pretty usable. There's a couple that are just like, what the hell is that? But... I mean, I love this killer. It is a blast to play. I played against the two since the buff. I love it. I love seeing Billy actually being able to use his power on a lot of maps now and not just feel like, you know, he's screwed for revving and stuff. It's it's so awesome. Billy uh, comes with the game too. So, I mean, if you're, especially if you're newer to DVD, this is what I would definitely try out and just practice in a little bit. He is so much fun. So much fun. The next one's kind of weird because Nurse has a very unique power. Uh, it is interesting. It can be kind of fun to use. I, I, I just really, really, really do love the mobility killers as well as the range killers. The reason I'm putting her so low is because she is just so broken that playing her, I don't get that dopamine. I don't get that like feel good thing when I win or anything like that because it is just so broken. Uh, just completely ignoring everything on the map. I don't get that reward center going bing, bing, bing when I play Nurse simply because it is so insanely strong. Uh, I do think the power's cool. And uh, again, like I said, the mobility and stuff I, I love in this game. But it's she's just too strong for me to get real enjoyment out of. So I got to put her near the C tier for me. Myers, if we're talking about Scratch Mirror with a map offering, I really would put B tier, but just base Myers, uh, I gotta put near the bottom. There's just, you know, his whole power is you stare at people and walk really slow and then M1. Like, there's no mechanics, uh, his stealth is mediocre, and uh, the killer is just pretty outdated in my opinion. Again, some of the add-ons could bump that up a bit, but... I would say for this tier list, I don't really just want to include, like, if I'm bringing a map offering and add-ons, because I very rarely do that. I almost never bring a map offering. So I'm going to put him in the D tier, because the power by itself, without any of that stuff going on and going for the jump scares, is very uninteresting to me, personally. Uh, Hag's also going to go in the D tier for me. 
Uh, same reason as Trapper. There's a lot of setup time at the start of the game where you're just doing nothing but basically staring at the ground. And uh, the survivors have a ton of counterplay. A ton of counterplay to her power and plays proxy camping playstyle very well. All that stuff for me personally when I'm playing killer I find very uninteresting. It's not mechanical. Sure, sometimes it can be satisfying to have a nice web set up and they get chained into them and stuff like that here and there. Uh, some maps can have your traps very hidden on hag and that can be enjoyable. But again, there's a lot of counterplay. You can have people spawning 10 feet away from you and popping your traps right away, making her pretty unsatisfying a lot of the time. Uh, and people can still meet up and heal and stuff like that. She can get bullied pretty hard still. But uh, yeah, for me personally, I, I find her pretty boring to play. And uh, if she had less counterplay, it probably wouldn't be this way. But oh well. Next up, we got Doctor, who I actually really enjoy. So I'm going to put him in the A tier. The reason I find Doctor so cool, uh, and he's going to be even cooler in the next patch once they give him the base kit, Electrode, and Discipline, is there are just so many potential builds you can run on this killer to change up your play style whenever you want to. His power really is super rewarding a lot of time, especially now that MFT is nerfed. Great info in the kit. Again, so many different fun builds you can run on him. Like, nobody uses the skill check builds like Doctor, and I don't know why something about that is so satisfying. See, so, seeing somebody miss, like, five in a row is just so awesome. Uh, also, something I want to mention real quick, because I do love Doctor, and maybe you guys are going to try him out. Herman the Doctor is an amazing Doctor streamer over on Twitch. One of the most entertaining streams I've ever seen. Just awesome animations, everything. So if you are thinking about checking him out, go check out Herman the Doctor on Twitch. But now, I want to put our next killer in the A tier, which is Huntress. So much potential on this killer. So many fun things you could do. Completely toss the add-ons aside. The cross maps. Hearing that sound from a Huntress hatchet, I'll play it right now. Wow is so ridiculously satisfying to hear when you hit a cross map. It is like almost nothing else in the whole game. Uh, and you know, getting those back-to-back -back hits, two tapping people, uh, man, this killer is a blast. There could be some maps again where, you know, like Billy, where the power is a little bit harder to use and you can't go for that stuff. You know, the indoor stuff that's just uh, completely preventing you from getting full value out of the power. But she is so much fun in the right situations and definitely a killer. A lot of people play for good reason because she is just so much fun. Uh, really, really solid killer too. So I'm going to leave her in the A tier. Next up, we got Bubba. And, you know, it can be a fun power to use when you're hitting those weird mind games like moonwalking and stuff in different loops and uh, getting the jump on people, stuff like that. But again, realistically, he has no mobility. Um, you have to deal with all the resources on the map against uh, any team of survivors who's just holding left click on gens, and they're gonna yam him out. And I know this is sounding more like I'm doing an actual tier list when I'm talking about Bubba, but realistically for me, it is very unfun across the board when killers just have such easy, like mindless counterplay to a killer. Uh, while, you know, you're just trying to, like, use your power and actually having to think and stuff like that. It, it, it takes a little bit of the fun out of, of it for me personally. So, for that reason, I'm putting Bubba this low. I do think his power is kind of cool. Just too many pallets and stuff on these maps. Very strong windows everywhere, making it a little less awesome to use. Then we got Fredster, who I'm also going to put in... I'll put him in the C tier. Uh, only because <laughs> sometimes... Using those fake pallets, watching people like run to yellow in the in the dream world and just slam the pallet 20 feet away and go down. That shit is very funny to me. I love that. I love the run to yellow gamers in the dream world. But other than that, uh, this killer honestly just sucks balls. You know, there's so many killers that just do everything he can do way better than him. Clouds chase power, pinheads chase power. You know, you look at Demo with the mobility and the better chase power than Freddy could ever dream of. And... <clears throat> Freddy requires people to be in the dream world to even use the mediocre chase power. So, I mean, there's just so many ways that Freddy could just get bullied throughout an entire game. But yeah, that kind of stuff is kind of funny. So that's the only reason I'm not putting him in D tier. Pig, for me personally, I'm also going to put in D tier. And I want you guys to keep in mind, you know, I know there's a lot of pig fans and stuff like that out there. I want you guys to keep in mind when I'm doing this tier list, I'm not trying to 
poop on any of these killers or say, you know, these killers are so lame or whatever. This is just subjectively my opinions on how I have fun in DBD. So, for me, Pig, her ambush is extremely weak. Uh, you're rarely going to be getting very good value out of that in any game. If you could use it a little bit more like you're about to in the next patch, maybe she'll be a little bit more fun. Maybe she'll get bumped up. Uh, the traps don't feel very rewarding to me at all. You know, you put a trap on somebody and maybe they spend some time on the boxes. Nothing really fun about that to me. I, I would say it's interesting. I wouldn't say it's fun at all to me. Just no real mechanics going on most of the time. Uh, her stealth is super, like, weak. I guess you can, like, have people boop you. If you like that, she's probably more fun. But there's so many killers in this game with such interesting chase powers that I gotta put her down here in the D tier. Next up, we got the Clown, and I'm gonna put him in B tier for the exact same reason as Wraith. These two are very chill killers. Uh, not a lot of mechanics involved whatsoever. You can slap on a chill build if you're looking to just hop on DBD and vibe, chucking some bottles at people, slowing them down and getting some free hits here and there. Super, super simple. And you don't really have to focus too much, like not really mechanical. The only reason I'm putting Clown in B tier uh, over, you know, and Pig in D tier for that reason is, uh, again, Pig could get turbo bullied. Clown, not so much. This chase bar is actually insanely good for uh, the amount of effort you have to put in. And uh, yeah, again, like I said, you could just hop on, vibe, and still do really, really well with this killer. Not really thinking too much. So that stuff's pretty fun to me. Next up is Spirit, and again, uh, but the killer's power is super unique. You know, that whole playing off sound stuff is really unique to Spirit, and it's very cool. You know, Pyramid Head does a little bit of that too with his power listening through walls and stuff. But Spirit's the one who really, really, really plays through, plays around uh, sound, which is super different. And uh, I do think that's really cool. <clears throat> Once you play her a few games, to me, it feels a little bit too simple for how strong it is. Uh, pretty relatively easily to easy to consistently win on this killer without too much effort at all. Uh, but again, I do think it's a really interesting power and it is fun to use. To me still, when I'm having the most fun is when a power is really interesting and mechanical and getting the reward for that, something like Billy, right? That's why he's in the S tier, Huntress in the A tier, stuff like that. So that's where I'm going to be putting Spirit. Next up, we got Legion, who I'm also going to be putting in the B tier. Uh, after their rework not too long ago, ton of add-on combinations you can run on this killer that are really fun, along with builds. You know, the Eerie Button and uh, I believe Julie's mixtape together is a pretty fun combo with, like, Enduring Spirit Fury. Uh, Never Sleep Pills and Mural Sketch getting you, like, three fifth hits a game is obviously fun. Who doesn't like getting downs in your power, right? But, uh... Yeah, again, there's still some maps where this just, it feels bad, for sure, to play this killer. But, uh, I don't know, they have, like, the coolest cosmetics in the entire game. So you just hop on, you know you're dripped out more than anybody on Legion. And, uh, using those fun add-ons and stuff, bang or chase music. How could you not be having fun with that kind of chase music blasting the whole time, right? Either way, yeah, I'll leave them in the B tier, because they're just not quite there with Doctor and Huntress to me, but... They are still really fun. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do something like this. So, Plague is a weird one. It is very satisfying to be getting those, like, over-loop shots with her uh, Corrupt Purge and stuff like that. That is really enjoyable to me. But the add-ons are so disgusting. She does have a little bit of map dependency. You know, there can be a lot of counterplay against her that, to me, like I've said in previous killers here can suck a lot of the fun out of it. She is insanely good, and you can stop games if you're down to just slug it up and run the strongest add-ons and stuff. She is disgusting. I don't like just going around like for slugging, personally. Uh, you know, it's just not something I feel super good about. It's just not my, not my type of thing most of the time. You know, unless people are hiding in corners, then I'm gonna slug them, but uh, <laughs> yeah. That whole playstyle of just turbo slugging, I don't really enjoy as much, so I try to avoid it. And that is how you have to get maximum value out of her power. Uh, that's the only reason I'm putting her this low. I do think the power is really fun to use. Don't get me wrong. So keeping that in mind, the power as a whole, as in fun to use, is an A tier to me. But the playstyle brings her to C tier for me. All right, I'm sorry. I know there's a lot of Ghostface lovers out there. 
after doing the Ghostface win streak, D tier. This killer's fucking in the D tier for fun. You play against anybody on comms, you literally don't have a power. You're just M1 man running around looking weird. Uh, you know, trying to stare at people and you just can't. Uh, not really in, in any interesting add-ons. You pretty much have to run Philly every game, so you just stalk faster. Again, not really any cool build combinations. People run the speed stuff, but... Uh, you know, he has a wonky reveal mechanic that sometimes you get revealed through walls and then you're playing against him and you have to hump the guy for 12 seconds to get the reveal to pop. I don't know. It doesn't make much sense to me. I think if this killer was any good, he would probably not be this low because he can teabag. Who doesn't like teabagging here and there on killer, right? You get teabagged after somebody pre-drops five pallets, you drop with the bags on their forehead. That's how it is. That's how it's got to be. I would love to do that on artists. Drop some bags on their forehead. Can't do it. But the killer's power is just not mechanical or anything. I know there's some people out there who want to argue Ghostface is skill-based uh, in some way, but it's just not. he's got nothing going for him. He's got nothing going for him against people on comms and paying attention to where you're at. Nothing. No, D tier. Demo is also going to be going to the B tier. I might actually put him here for fun. Uh, I really like using the shred. There's weird little stuff you can do on some of the cars on certain maps. Like sliding around stuff, which is really, really fun to do. Also, realistically, overall, the power is super simple. You know, you can put portals on the gens, get free info, a little bit of built-in slowdown, and he's got a solid chase power. It's not ridiculously mechanical in any way. There are little tricks and stuff you could do with him in certain loops to get hits that people wouldn't think you could. But, uh, again, it's nothing like Huntress or Billy. So, I, I, while I love Demo... As far as fun goes, there's definitely more fun killers, so I'm slapping him in the B tier. Next up, we got Oni. I'm actually going to move this kind of like this. Oni, well, I'm biased. Oni was the first killer I ever mained in DVD. He's the reason I even got into this game to begin with. Uh, I, had, I had had DVD since 2016 when it came out, but I never really like looked at killer or anything like that uh, as something I would really want to grind out. And then Oni dropped, and uh, I got him. From my, my buddy Jake gifted him to me, actually. And so I just played Oni for like three months. Just only Oni. It was a, a total blast. Loved the killer. Um, and his power is one of the most fun to use. Getting some nice flicks and snowballing and stuff on him is awesome. Yeah, I just love Oni. A lot of build combinations that are really good on him, too. Kind of similar to Doctor. So many different ways of just gathering info or... You know, playing around with his add-ons a little bit, like the wall hack stuff, uh, stealth builds. Very, very fun. So, I love Oni, and he's going to be sitting right there. Yeah, it's just the fact, like, if Oni had 100% uptime on his power, I would easily put him in S tier. But again, it's just, you, you don't have 100% uptime. You know, you're going to be having to just M1 against pre-drop squads here and there. So, I, that's the only reason he's not S tier for me. Next up, Deathslinger is also getting slapped in the A tier. Getting some nice shots on Slinger is super satisfying. Um, getting little shots through holes or like weird gaps like in Shack and stuff like that. Very, very fun. And I love comboing him with Dissolution to just <laughs> make people feel goofy for trying to pre-drop a god pal. You know, break the chain on him. They vault and just go down. I love this killer. Very fun. I'm really rusty on him right now, but that's besides the point. Uh, this killer's a blast to play. If you're choosing a main Deathslinger, you're going to be having a lot of fun. A lot of people who like FPS games get into him. Remember, his shot is a projectile, so it's not going to be always right where you aim. It's going to have a little bit of travel time, especially at max range, so you're going to have to predict some dodges here and there. But very, very fun in general. And they're starting to give him some pretty dope skins, too. That Iron Maiden skin and the weapon... Makes him feel so satisfying to land a shot out to. Next up, we got Pyramid Head. Some of you guys will probably disagree with this one. That's totally okay. Uh, I just find his power super clunky and uh, awkward to use. You know, it's one of those powers that has the potential to be ridiculously fun. And hitting those pot shots is super satisfying. But it's really clunky and um, really slow. So, going for those max range stuff with the range add-ons. Servers have so much time to react. It's like if they had the reaction time of a sloth, they could dodge it. So, kind of unsatisfying there. You know, uh, he is really solid. And it's not that I just don't enjoy him at all. It's just clunky. And it's not like a lot of these other killers up here. 
It's not smooth in any way. So for me, it does take a little bit of the fun out of it, but still a really cool killer. I do like him. Next up, we got Blight, who again, like I was saying before, those mobility killers are super fun and Blight can be using his mobility power the entire game, unlike Oni. Uh, really, really fun just zooming around the map playing Pinball Man. Uh, I, don't, I don't play a whole lot of him, but he is a, a blast to play. So uh, really, really strong killer too. If you're looking to pick somebody up, can't go wrong picking Blight. And because, uh, I mean, I could definitely see myself just playing him for an entire day and still having fun the whole time. Next up, we got Twins, who is going all the way at the bottom of the list. There is no killer less fun to me than Twins. This killer is so clunky. They get a new bug every single patch. It takes a full minute to down and then hook somebody. Uh, if you want to walk over and do that. Or you have to be basically bleeding survivors out. I absolutely despise this killer. I don't know how anybody plays it. They have to be some form of a masochist. Uh, in my mind anyway. I'm not sure if, if that's 100% true. But I can't imagine somebody who just doesn't enjoy a little bit of pain. Would ever want to main this killer. I think it is ridiculously unfun. Again getting hits with Victor can be satisfying. But so much counterplay. You have so many bugs where Victor will just phase through a survivor or not be able to hit over something. And then you get kicked in the face and you have to wait 20 seconds to get near them again with your power. No killer in the game is punished more for using their power than this killer. And it is so disgusting how much counterplay survivors get. I despise it. So if it was me, if you want to ask my opinion, stay the hell away from this killer. It is not fun. And not at all. It is not fun. New Trickster, I'm actually going to put up in the B tier, probably around here. I'm going to put Trickster up in the B tier here. Now that you are actually aiming your knives and they're not just like RNG based and the main event can actually be used, uh, it can be really, really fun to, to use the knives here and play around with this power and stuff. Uh, 115 too, so you can also be going for M1s. Uh, I, I can have a good time on Trickster. It's just still... I feel a little bit mean running him sometimes. We're just lasering down survivors and they just can't go anywhere. I, um, which, which doesn't feel, uh, the most satisfying. It's just like, well, what the hell was that guy supposed to do? Right. He just dies. But, uh, yeah. Uh, at the same time, there's also some bad maps for him. We're pulling knives is really bad and stuff like that. So he's not going to go any higher than this, but I can definitely have a good time on trickster and vibe it up. So I'll put him in the B tier. Next up, we got Nemesis, who I actually really enjoy playing. I'm going to put him in the A tier. Uh, power super satisfying to use. It's not the best one in the entire game. But getting those hits over, like, back-to-back -back with your with your whip and, um, you know, chaining hits super easily, getting little funny plays with the zombies and stuff like that. I mean, the killer's a blast to play. I really, really enjoy him. Yeah, I mean, obviously some games are not going to have the greatest time in the world. But, uh, yeah, I love them. I think it's super fun and super rewarding power. Uh, ramping up and everything is a really cool mechanic. Way better than Myers ramp up, for sure. Uh, so, I'm believing him in the A tier. I think Nemesis is awesome. Pinhead has a stupid amount of bugs that, like, consistently happen with him. But when he's not bugged, I really, really do enjoy using his chains. I I'm actually going to put him lower. So, here's the other reason. I'm going to put him probably, like, here. Using his power is super satisfying to land those chains and get the hits and stuff like that. And uh, the little mini game of figuring out where the box is at and uh, trying to play around that, making the survivor's life really hard uh, is super fun. But seeing the chains break on absolutely nothing is so unsatisfying. And it happens all the time. Uh, even bringing the, the impaling wire add-on to make two more chains spawn. It's just not enough in a lot of spots because they could just... The, the chains will legitimately break on air, and then they're just debuking across the map. I don't understand how that even happens, but it is a thing, and that takes away from the killer big time for me. Uh, I do still really like him, and, you know, if you like the little mini game and stuff like that, definitely a really fun killer to play. Next up, we got our girl, The Artist, who is going right at the top. I'm, yep, we gotta do it. Look, I love Artist. Uh... My favorite killer in the entire game. She is so cool. The crows, 
the theme of the crows is so dope to me. I love the crows. Insane potential. The killer's a Swiss army knife. Anything you want to do with her, you can. Uh, she has a couple interesting add-ons. Like, we've done a few videos on stealth artists, which is so much fun. It's weird that it works, but it works super well because uh, she has a pretty quiet killer. And I just love her. I've loved artists since she dropped. She is my, yeah, favorite killer in the entire game. And not just because of how insanely good she is. She is super fun, super satisfying, and... Uh, you know, you could look real swaggy on this killer here and there, so <laughs> I'm putting her at the top for me. Honestly, I feel kind of weird about ranking Sonica with you guys, because this is one killer I just really don't play a lot at all, because here's the thing. I don't even know what iteration of Sonica we have right now. There's been like seven in the past month, so I really have no idea exactly what she does right now. I'm going to play it safe here and put her in the B tier. She has great mobility, can teleport to a lot of TVs, not super map dependent, does really well on the stacked maps like Meat Plant and Midwitch and stuff like that. But again, I, I really don't even know 100% what she does right now. I'm going to be honest with you guys because there's been so many fucking different Onrios in the past month that I can't keep track. Uh, so this is where I got her for now. Now uh, here's Dredge. I really want to put him in the A tier. I think the power and the theme of this killer is so fucking dope. It is so cool. The teleporting, the lockers, and the whole remnant idea. He's a real horror killer. But realistically, one thing that majorly sucks the fun out of it, and I, I maybe it's a little weird to you guys that I, 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 um, I am incorporating a little bit of an actual tier list into uh, the fun tier list. But when a killer has this much counterplay and it is so simple for the survivors, I, it does suck the fun out of it quite a bit for me. I'm actually going to put him right here. The killer is so cool. Don't get me wrong. I really, really love Dredge. There are so many maps now. Behavior's doing this over and over and over again. There are so many maps now where all they have to do is pre-drop 20 pallets in a line and keep holding W to the next one where... Dredge's power is unusable in almost any loop in the game. There's a few maps where you can get really good value out of it. There's a few maps where you can corner survivors here and there. But realistically, there's just so much counterplay denying you any use of your power whatsoever that I have to put them this low. The power is super fun to use. The mind games are super fun, super satisfying. The maps completely rob you of the ability to use it. And for me, it drags him down so much from where I want him to be. Uh, so I have to put him here personally. Wesker is one of those super high potential characters that is really, really fun to get value out of his power with. I uh, love going for those M2 only games. Really, really large variety of add-ons that you could use. Uh, even weird stuff like the the glasses, uh, the purple add-on to get undetectable any, anytime somebody's fully infected can be really, really fun. For some reason, it just works. He's short. He blends in with a lot of maps because his clothes are so dark and everything. They probably think you're a survivor half the time. Uh, it gets huge value. I don't know why. And uh, the power by itself is super fun to use. And obviously him being a really solid killer helps out with that. Because there's not just a stupid amount of counterplay. I think his power is one of those weird ones. Where as good as it is, survivors always have meaningful counterplay and chase. Just based off of their own uh, skill level. Uh, not just some crazy stuff like Singularity EMPs completely making your power unusable. So for me, toss him in the A tier, and I think he's I think he's an awesome killer. Next up, we got Knight. Oh, mm, look. This is what it is. Now, it's kind of funny to get guard value here and there. But again, like I've said throughout this tier list, I am more of a fan of the mechanical stuff uh, going for wacky hits you know artists and hunters stuff like that death slinger uh mechanical stuff that is uh, uh more what i feel rewarded from and what i really enjoy in dbd and knight is literally a power where ai plays the game for you and that's what it is so really really not super interesting to me whatsoever uh to play or play against i think it's i think it's just a a really cool theme, but a terrible design for a killer power in this game. I just don't see how it fits. But uh, I guess, you know, they make survivors so beginner friendly that a, a lot of people could just play it. Knight's pretty much the same way. Uh, it's so beginner friendly that 
I think anybody could hop on night and after a couple games just be doing just fine every single game. You barely have to play them at all. It's just the guards doing it, doing the work. But uh, yeah, there's night in my fun tier list. Next up, we got Skull Merchant. Um, yeah, she's going in the D tier too. Um, here, we're going to move this stuff around a little bit. Right about there. I think this looks good. Okay, no mechanics. You're plopping down eight drones in a tight area that'll just eventually injure somebody uh, pretty much no matter what they do. Uh, still a very territorial play style. Uh, while not being able to hardcore three gen like she did before, which was just disgusting. Anybody who was doing that grossed me out. But um, still very territorial where you're just sitting in an area uh, having giant circles that survivors are just forced to run out of. Not super interesting on either side at all to me. It's just a bad design from start to finish with this killer. Since they dropped her, she just had a bad design. So I, I'm, I'm putting her in the D tier. There's really not much else to say about her uh, other than she's not as bad as she was before. <laughs> I don't know. I really want to put Singularity right here because the idea of the power and the way it should play is ridiculously enjoyable. It is very cool, uh, super unique. And I love the pause and everything. How it plays, though, is more similar to Pinhead. Where objects have such finicky, wonky hitboxes that getting your pods right when you want to and the exact way you want to feels like ass sometimes. One pixel of a leaf will block your line of sight from being able to lock onto a survivor. Makes no sense to me. The EMPs are the most brain-dead counterplay to any killer power in the entire game. And they literally open the boxes for the survivors to the point they don't even have to spend any time getting this ridiculously unskilled counterplay to a power that takes so much thought and setup and what you're exactly wanting to do in each situation that it drags the fun way lower than it should be to me. If they just fixed object hitboxes to the point where every time I wanted to place a pod somewhere, it actually placed, just that alone would put him up here. That alone. But the hitboxes are so bad in this game. And that, sitting there trying to shoot a pod at a location that shows as green 15 times feels absolutely awful to me. Uh, and it just sucks a lot of the real potential from this killer. So, unfortunately, I'm going to put Singularity middle B tier. If they just fixed object hitboxes, it'd be a completely different story, though. Next up, we got Zeno, who I think is... An awesome killer. The tail hits are so satisfying. His mobility is the coolest in the game to me. Those tunnels are so dope. Um, while the survivors do get a form of counterplay similar to the singularities, where they just open up a box and get placed down this thing to take you out of your power, you can play around it. You know, you're not just completely denied your power immediately. You can play around it. There's meaningful counterplay on both sides. Uh, not just with the flamethrowers, but with the power in general in Chase. Great mobility, built-in info with the mobility. Uh, makes his map pressure super solid, uh, or their map pressure super solid. I don't know what gender the Xeno is, whatever. You know what I meant? Uh, super, super solid. Not high map dependency at all, which is always going to make a killer more fun to me. Uh, when I can just hop on the killer and I have to be sitting there thinking, oh my god, is this? are we going to get this map? Like, am I going to be trying to hop on Billy for fun and get Hawkins? You know, stuff like that. Uh, so, that can always up a killer's fun when you're not just dreading a certain map or something like that. Uh, so blast to play. A lot of potential for outplays and cool hits you can go for. And, uh, yeah, I love Zeno. We got 100 wins in a row on him. You should check that video out if you haven't seen it. 100 wins in a row on Zeno. That's 4K hatch, by the way. Keep that in mind. Very, very fun. Chucky's very fun, too. I'm going to put him... Uh, here again, I do really enjoy using the power and stuff like that, but uh, they removed the flicking from Chucky. It's a very linear power, you know exactly what he can do. There's no skill ceiling on it, uh, as far as getting those flicks or anything like that anymore, which subtracts fun for me when they're when they lower a skill ceiling of a character, it makes it a whole lot less interesting to me. And uh, I understand kind of why they did it. But at the same time, you know, uh, there's only so much you can do with the Chuckster in chase. You are limited uh, because of that flicking being removed. 
So I'm going to be dropping him bottom of A tier. I do sure really enjoy the power and his voice lines are killer. Super good. If you like the voice lines on uh, killer in this game, nobody tops Chucky. Singularity comes close, but nobody tops Chucky. It's awesome. There's so many of them. So yeah, he is really, really fun and funny to play as. So he's going in A tier no matter what. You know what? I'm actually going to put him uh, probably about there. I have not played a lot of this guy. Uh, just a bit on the PTB. I think maybe 10 games top. This killer seems like it has a ridiculous amount of potential. Uh, very, very cool. Um, I'm going to put him in the S tier right now. I think he's going to be one of my favorite killers in the entire game. Uh, once I get to try him a little bit more, maybe he'll even end up here. I could be biased because I always just love new stuff in DBD. Um, I, I don't think I've seen a killer in the PTB that I've loved to this extent. Just the amount of cool things I could, I've already seen that you can go for and try it out on this killer. Uh, so much potential. It reminds me of Artist in the fact that his power is going to be like a Swiss army knife with the amount of ways you can use it. Uh, you know, the long range stuff, the, uh, the multi hits like severed hands allows you to do an artist. Um, way better mobility, obviously than artist cause she has none, uh, and still has that map coverage going on. Very, very cool killer. I love the theme of him. I think uh, as far as an actual tier list goes, we'll see, uh, about a week after he comes out, I'll probably be making something like that. But it just seems so awesome, and he's like just this freaky killer with creepy voice lines and stuff. I think he's awesome, and it is exactly what I would want to see from, you know, this like crazy horror-themed killer. Um, really, really good job by them, I think. And uh, yeah, I'm going to put him here.